the story of Santity, the King's Minister. Once upon a time, Santity, the King's Minister, returned from suppressing disorder on the kingdom's frontier. The king was so pleased he turned over the kingdom to him for seven days and sent him a woman, the kingdom's most celebrated dancer, whom Santity deeply admired, and this woman sang and danced for him. So for seven days Santity indulged himself in liquor and then put on his most splendid clothes and adornments, mounted a royal elephant and set out for the bathing place. As he passed out of the gateway, he saw the teacher entering the city for arms, and drunkenly nodded his head by way of salute to the teacher, and moved on. The teacher smiled. Why do you smile, Reverend Sir? asked the elder Ananda. The teacher said, Ananda, look at the king's minister, Santity. This very day, adorned as he is in the finest worldly luxury, he will come into my presence, and at the conclusion of a stanza, he will attain arahatship. He will then assume a sitting posture at the height of seven palm trees, and will there and then pass into final nibbana. The crowd heard the words of the teacher, and those who were followers of other teachers said, The monk Gautama says whatever he likes, whatever comes into his head, how can this drunken sot, adorned in all his finery, listen to the Dharma at the end of the day, attain arahatship, and pass into Parinibbana? This is precisely what will not happen. On the other hand, those in the crowds who had taken refuge in the teacher said, Buddhas are mighty. Today we will see the grace of the Buddha and the gracefulness of santity. After spending time in the bathing place, Santati returned to his drinking hall. The dancer straight away came down to display her skills in singing and dancing. Now this woman, aware of the prestige of performing for the king's hero, had fasted for seven days so that she might display more perfect grace of body. As a result, on that day she suddenly experienced piercing knife-like pains in her belly as she was dancing. Her body convulsed, and with open mouth and open eyes, she collapsed and died on the spot. When he saw her collapse, Santity said, Look to the lady. She is dead, Master, came the reply. Santity could not believe what had happened. Overwhelmed with shock and mighty sorrow, in an instant the liquor he had drunk during the preceding week vanished away, like a drop of water on a red-hot pot's herd. He said to himself, Who but the teacher can extinguish my sorrow? So he went to the teacher, paid respect, and threw himself down, saying, Reverend Sir, I am overwhelmed with grief and sorrow. I know that only you can help me be my refuge. The teacher replied, You have indeed come into the presence of one who is able to extinguish your sorrow. In countless past lives, and on numberless occasions, when this woman has died in this very manner, you have shed tears more abundant than all the waters contained in the four great oceans. So saying, he pronounced the following stanza. Whatever in the past was produced by excellence, let there be for you no ownership afterwards. And if in the present you will not grasp at all, you will fare on in perfect peace. At the conclusion of this stanza, Santity attained arahatship. Now fully enlightened, Santity surveyed his own aggregate of life, and perceiving he had little time to live, requested the teacher permit him to enter into Parinibbana and depart from the world. However, the teacher considered the onlookers, those who had come to see his predictions fail, and those who had come with full confidence that the Buddha had rightly judged that Santity was ripe for the attainment of arahatship, in spite of his earlier intoxication. So he asked Santity to review his past lives, and relate to those present 
what merit he had performed to attain enlightenment. Not only that, but to do it poised at the height of seven palm trees above the ground. Very well, said Sandity, and saluting the teacher, he rose to the height of one palm tree and then descended to the ground. Then he saluted the teacher once more, and rising gradually to the height of seven palm trees, he seated himself cross-legged in the air and said, Listen, reverend sir, to the meritorious deed I performed in a previous existence. So saying, he related the following story. Ninety-one world cycles of time ago, in the dispensation of the Buddha Vipassi, I was reborn in the city of Bandumati. Now at this time, the lifespan of human beings was measured in thousands of years. One day, the following thought occurred to me. What labour will do away with the want and suffering of others? And I observed the labours of those who went about proclaiming the Dharma, and from that time forth I laboured at this very task. I incited others to perform works of merit, and I performed works of merit myself. I took precepts, gave alms, I listened to the Dharma, and I went about proclaiming, There are no jewels comparable to the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, therefore do honour to the three jewels. Now the father of the Buddha Vipassi was King Bandumati, and hearing my voice, sent for me and asked, Friend, what business are you going about? I replied, Your Majesty, I am proclaiming the virtues of the three jewels and inciting the populace to do works of merit. What vehicle do you travel on? asked the king. I travel about on my two legs, Your Majesty. Thereupon the king said, Friend, it is not fitting that you should go about in that fashion. Deck yourself with this garland of flowers and seat yourself on the back of a horse and go about in this fashion. So saying, he gave me a splendid garland of flowers and a fine horse. And so after this kindness, I went out about the same work on this fine horse. After some time, the king called me back, saying the horse was not enough, and presented me with a chariot drawn with four sin horses. After some time, doing the same work, the king called me back a third time and presented me with a magnificent royal elephant to go about this business. And I continued on in this manner for 80,000 years. As Santity thus related the story of his past deed in a previous existence, sitting cross-legged in the air, he applied himself to the meditation on the element of fire, and entering into a deep state of meditation, he departed his body and passed into Parinibbana. Instantly flames burst forth from his body and consumed it, and the relics floated down like jasmine flowers. In this way, the onlookers saw the Buddha's earlier prediction come true. Later, the monks were discussing how Santati attained Nibbana, adorned as the king's minister in all his finery. Was he a monk or a Brahmin? When the Buddha entered the hall, he asked what they were discussing and they told him. He said that it was equally proper to refer to Santati as a monk and a Brahmin and pronounced the following stanza. Though he be richly adorned, he lives in peace, calmed, tamed, restrained and pure. Having laid down the rod towards all beings, he is a Brahmin, an ascetic, a monk. Mm -hmm.